There are creatures all across the planet that we just can't seemingly explain by science. Cryptozoology is something that I've been very interested in since I was a child, and I'm glad to say that we're nearly 50 volumes into this series. Welcome back to the swamp, my friends. It's good to see you made it back for another video. Today, we're going to be sharing some creepy and allegedly true cryptid encounter stories sent in by viewers just like you. As always, if you have a story that you would like to share in a future video, be sure to submit your story at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I'd love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp. It's stories like yours that help keep this show going. Joining me today is my good friend Jensen. If you're not yet familiar with him, definitely check out his channel. Now, let's get into these creepy and allegedly true cryptid encounter stories sent in by viewers just like you. Hi, my name is Devin, and I will not be giving out much of my information because I'm not trying to have people come out here. I've never thought that the paranormal or cryptids could exist. Well, that was until about two weeks ago. I've been listening to this channel for a good week and a half now, and decided to send in my recent story so Swamp can hopefully share it on the show. Anyway, on to the story. About two weeks ago, I was coming home from work. I live roughly about 15 miles or so out of town, and I have a big farm in the middle of nowhere. So I'm driving home, when I hear this loud, gut-wrenching scream, like a girl or something, high-pitched as hell, and it hurt my ears as if someone had yelled right into them. I had no idea what it was, so I just drove home faster thinking it was some kids with a big loudspeaker blasting a girl screaming or something of the sorts. Hey, stranger things have happened in life. So, I just brushed it off when I got home. I did my nightly rituals which included watching TV until about 7.30. Then I made myself dinner. When I was eating dinner, my car alarm went off by itself. I grabbed my shotgun, a 12th gauge Remington. I went outside to see the disturbance. I walked all around, but I didn't see a thing. So I think, <laughs> okay, maybe a stick or something hit my car. I look at my car and notice these big claw marks on the sides. I quickly run inside and call the cops. When I tried, there was no cell service, since in this area, it is always hit or miss, honestly. Now, I'm in the middle of nowhere with... God knows what roaming around my house. So I go to lock my door when I realize I had closed it, and now it's open. I'm really worried now. I get my gun, and I start to turn on all the lights in the house. I wait in my panic room where there is only one doorway that I can get in or out from. Then, suddenly, I hear it again that gut-wrenching scream from before. It would make your blood curdle, and I hear heavy footsteps toward the panic door. Uh, I freak out, I get my shotgun, I put it in front of me, and I just shoot this massive hunched over figure. In my panic, I shoot the thing probably seven times until I ran out of ammo. It grunted in pain, and now it was about five feet from me. Uh, I shot the thing again, and it seemingly just smiled at me, and then ran out of my house. But before it left, I could swear it looked at me, and gave me this look that said, Next time you're dead. I don't want to meet this thing again. I looked up what I saw, trying to figure out what this thing could be, and I found this channel. And I think what I saw might be a skimwalker or something. I know that's cliche and everybody says that, but at this point... You could call it the Boogeyman, and I'd agree with you. Hello. I was watching one of your videos, and it reminded me of my own experience. It happened when I was eight years old, so I don't remember all the details, but I still hope you enjoy it. 
I used to live in a very remote and secluded area that was surrounded by mountains and thick forest. This happened in later summer, early fall, and it had been raining all day. I lived next to a very rich man with a large property, which he rarely visited. So when I and two of my friends got bored, we decided to sneak into his property and have a look around. I and my brother would always go into the property because there was a huge waterfall, a koi pond, and a herd of deer was usually there. I wanted to show my friends the waterfall and we snuck through the gate to get inside. When we were about halfway there, one of my friends suddenly got this sickening feeling, but I told her that she was fine and we kept going. By the time we got to the waterfall, I also felt sick. It wasn't like I was going to throw up, but the sick like, you need to run or you need to get away from something. I ignored it for as long as I could and began to watch at the koi pond until the feeling intensified and my other friends felt it as well. I turned to them and we debated if we should go back for a minute and then we heard a branch snap. This of course scared the living hell out of us and both of my friends bolted. I however looked to see what could have been there and at that moment I thought it was an old man because the old man was tall but looking back at it now I realized that it was not a man at all. I ran to catch up with them and I thought I heard a woman asking for help. I ignored it because I thought it was maybe one of my friends and kept running. I later found out that it was not. As we approached the gate we had slipped through before, I could hear someone or something coming after us. I was too afraid to turn back and look. I was the last one through and as I was going through the gate something got my foot. I yanked it free but I have no idea what could have gotten caught on. We ran all the way back to my house, my friends asked me who it was. I told them that it was an old man, and we were fine. We didn't feel normal again until we went to the birthday party, another one of my friends was having, and we were very far away. I have some other experiences like this, but none that were quite as scary as this one. I must add another detail that I forgot. While we're on our way to the waterfall, I usually see the herd of deer, but this time, I couldn't see them and there were no birds singing. It was just silent. I've been living in a forest surrounded by wildlife since I was born, so I never really gave much thought to the weird sounds. When I was 13 or so, I babysat a kid across the street, and he had just gotten his first BB gun. Since I started shooting when I was just four years old, I was asked to bring my old BB gun over to show him the ropes. It was just after sundown, and I was walking my long driveway approaching my brother's friend's cars, when I noticed something out of the corner of my eye. Something moved at a jogging pace parallel to me about 20 feet away. When I thought I saw movement, I stopped and looked at it. It was just after sundown, so everything was dark, but the sky still had a soft glow giving everything a vague outline. It was tall, maybe seven feet tall. It stopped at the same time I did. Part of me was hoping it was one of my brother's friends trying to play a trick on me, but I just knew it was way too tall, so I called out and said that I had a gun and told them I didn't want anything bad to happen, like me dropping it or it getting broken or something, and I got no reply. I got a bad feeling in the pit of my stomach, so I didn't look or stay too long and rushed inside. Once I was inside, I asked who was outside and they said everyone was inside playing video games. For years, I was convinced the tall dark figure I saw was Slenderman, until I learned about cryptids and I started googling what it could have been. In the next county over, local cryptids have been sighted called Wooded Devils of Coos County. They are basically known for standing completely still in the tree lines if it thinks it has been spotted. If anyone in the swamp knows anything about them, please comment. It is almost impossible to find much about it online. For some insight, my family is Native American and has warned me before of telling this story and that it should not be told or talked about at night. This is a warning, 
and continue at your own risk. This story was told to me by my aunt and takes place around 30 or so years ago when my aunt and her family used to live out in the middle of nowhere. When she was younger, my aunt lived with her siblings, my grandma, my grandpa, and I believe that was everybody at the time. The house they lived in at the time was a small wooden structure that stood on a cement foundation. The house itself had a living room in the front of the house and a short hallway that led to a bedroom in the back of the house. And since there wasn't plumbing available back then, there was an outhouse around 50 feet, I believe, in the back of the house. One day, my aunt and her sister were home alone, seeing as both of her brothers were with their dad in town, and my grandma had not yet gotten off work. They were both doing their everyday routine, which consisted of cleaning and preparing for supper. But when my aunt's sister went into the bedroom for something and didn't come back out, my aunt thought she had needed help since it had been a while since her sister left, so she went to look on her. When turning the corner and entering the room, she found her sister hiding behind a dresser that was beside the bed. Keep in mind, there were three beds and two dressers total in the room, with one window that was about five feet wide on the west wall. When she tried asking what was wrong and why she was hiding, she caught a glimpse of something at her right. She turned her head to the direction of the window at the end of the room. There were two hands hanging at the bottom of the window. Seeing this, my aunt froze before herself. She hid behind the dresser as well. When both my aunt and her sister decided to look at the window, they finally faced whatever it was that those hands were connected to. They came face to face with this dark figure, that whose head on top resembled that of spikes or horns. And with their only light being the sun in the distance setting behind the thing that they couldn't make out any other features. The only thing they were certain of was that it had no face and it was all black. Neither my aunt nor her sister knows how much time had passed before they snapped back to reality. And before they could even think about what happened, they were interrupted as the rest of their family walked into the house causing both my aunt and her sister to forget what had happened and continued on through the rest of their day. Even now, after all this time, neither of them knows what it was or why it was there. But one thing is certain. Whatever it was, was not good, and it was not there without reason. If anybody has any idea what this could be, please leave your thoughts down below. Hi Swamp, I'm a fan of yours and I really like to listen to your stories before sleeping. I have a story about a screamer. I am sure you probably haven't heard about it. Well, to start, I live in a region of vampires where they were born. Some of you know this region as the infamous Powder Keg, and most of you know this region as the Balkan Screamer. Its translated name and the original name is Drekovic. It's a small creature, or monster. Some say that the Screamer represents the soul of a child that was not baptized, a child that died at birth, or a child that was thrown away for some unknown reason. And as the name says, it is known for this horrific scream that it emanates, which is like a mix of a woman and a wolf, and a baby's cry. That is how those who have heard it describe it. That is enough for the history. Now on to the story. A husband and wife that lived here went to Austria to find a better life. We say they went for bread. They lived in the city. I do not know the name of the city, and I believe they lived there for around five years. Later they moved to some smaller city. It was close to their jobs and the rent was low. There was a forest near, and they were a modern day couple, so they were eating more veggies and liked to do yoga and running and spending a lot of time in nature. So one day, they decided to go running into the forest. Before the forest, there is a field and a small creek that separates the forest and fields. Over the creek was a small bridge. The day was nice and warm, perfect for running. They started around 500 meters from the forest. The field was full of life. Birds were chirping. But as soon as they got close to the bridge, everything suddenly became quiet. They were talking and did not care about that. These were the words of the husband. We were talking, and everything was normal. 
We got close to a small bridge. I stopped to take a little break before going into the forest, and that is where I noticed that everything was quiet. No birds, nothing. My wife told me to continue, so I did. As soon as I put my foot on the bridge, it started screaming. Every time it screamed, it sent chills down my spine. We went back from the bridge, but it continued screaming and following us. I knew that it was a screamer. I have heard about them, but I never knew they were real. I got my phone out and tried to record, but my phone was malfunctioning for whatever reason. I, I just, just don't know how to explain how this scream sounded. It's almost like it was scrambling my brains, but I could not seem to locate where this creature was. The next time it screamed, we ran back to our house. He told this story to his friend quite a few times, and it never changed. He says that they never went running into the forest again. That is essentially it. I know it's probably not the scariest story, but I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sorry for the English as it's not my first language. Keep up the good work, and I really enjoy the show. One night, about a week ago, I was camping on my property in the middle of the secluded forest in southern Georgia. It was in one of my small cabins near my big lake. I have no neighbors within 20 miles from the main highway. There are 2,000 acres of land with a nice 77 acre private lake. I was laying on my stomach, incapable of movement on my bottom bunk bed. My heart was racing, pounding more like it. I was frozen solid, sweating and scared out of my mind. My eyes were the only thing I seemed to have control of, and they were failing me now. I had been in this frozen, pitch black state for only a few seconds, but seemed like a long time. I was alone, 10 miles away from my house. I have spent a few years camping at the other small cabins around the lake. I have seen deer, raccoons, coyotes, and bobcats. I only heard that black bears can be spotted in these parts but they happen to be very rare. I've never seen one in the wild, in this area anyway, but this thing I heard was nothing like any bear or any other creature I've ever heard. The animal's footsteps are what woke me up as the weight of the creature pressed down on thick layers of dead leaves and soft earth. I almost felt like I was in one of those cars as the T-Rex shook the earth from the Jurassic Park movies. I tried not to breathe as the creature walked right next to the cabin, fearing that it might come closer to investigate my presence. I hoped it would get bored and eventually go away, so I waited. It finally came to a stop, but the stillness is what scared me the most. The forest was quiet, unnaturally quiet. No birds, no crickets, nothing at all. All I could hear, quite frankly, was my rapid heartbeat and every slow breath I took. Then just as I thought I might have been imagining the entire thing, a branch cracked right outside of the room I was in, and there was a quick shuffle in the brush. That is when I realized that this was happening for real. Still laying on my stomach and covered in darkness, I lay listening. Even the slightest movement can be heard and felt. I was on high alert, so my body was picking up everything. The creature had moved again. One step is all it took. I was trapped inside the cabin all alone and had no way to defend myself. I had a 30-30 rifle with five rounds in the next room, but in order to get to it, I'd have to walk to the room, unzip the gun cover, and load it with bullets. I did not want to risk getting the cabin broken into, so I just stayed there, where I was, and I listened. The silence is what made my experience so very frightening. The animal would take a step, sometimes even two, and then it would just stop for what felt like several minutes. We would both be listening, me listening to it and it listening to me as I tried to get to my gun. I'd take a deep breath or try to make the quietest steps and the creature would move forward one slow step at a time. A few minutes passed as I stood completely still, but it felt like hours. I could tell the animal was still there from its horrible stench that ran in between the cabin's board walls, but its presence was more frightening than anything. Even though I couldn't actually see the animal, I could feel just how big it was. The earth 
rumbled in a slow, monstrous tone. I could tell the wet air surrounding the beast and practically taste the dirt and disease that hung off the creature's body as it was only a couple of feet away from where I was standing. I could hear it breathing. My heart was racing. My face was dripping with sweat. And I was sure this was going to be the moment my life came to an end. My whole life flashed before my eyes and thought about what it might be like for my friends and long-distance family to never know what truly happened to me. They would have a hard time finding me after all. I was camping out in the middle of a secluded forest, miles from my house. My plan was to hike back a few days later. If I had died, it would be weeks, or months, or maybe even never, before somebody found my body. The creature moved forwards again. Its massive form cast a shadow on the exterior of the cabin in between the boards, and I could see just how big the animal was from the right corner of my eye. Even though I had already accepted my fate, I decided to give myself one last chance at life. I was not going to just stand there and die. I was going to fight. Breathing as slowly as I can, I am right next to where my gun is, and I just have to get it out of the case. I am just able to reach it without making another step. The creature is standing right there on the other side of the wall as it makes a loud, beastly breath. It had to be at least nine or ten feet tall. Its breath penetrated between the boards like a big sneeze that entered the cabin. I couldn't tell which smelled worse, the beast itself or that horrible mucus that got inside my cabin. I loaded up my rifle with all five rounds calmly and as quietly as I could. I stood at the front door where the creature stood as well. Without hesitation, I took one last deep breath, ran towards the door, opened it, and fired two shots. I screamed like I just reached manhood as I shot the rifle, but the creature vanished in the brush as I only captured a glimpse of it. Whatever it was, the sucker was fast. I never thought I would see the next day, but I couldn't sleep for the rest of that night, thinking that it would return. As soon as the sun had risen, I packed up my backpack, got on my four-wheeler, and I got the heck home. My grandfather had told me stories about my Native American ancestors who built this property nearly a thousand years ago and would tell me stories about the legendary wild ape man that wandered around the property for many thousands of years. My white bloodline started with my great-great-grandfather. I never thought much of the wild ape man stories since I never thought I would take control of the property. Do I regret living here? In a way, yes, because of this incident, but in many ways, no. I love the peace and quiet here. But the next time I go camping in those smaller cabins in the secluded woods, I'll go with more protection and lots of it. Hey, Swamp Dweller. This would be the first story I've ever submitted to any YouTuber or anyone of that matter. I've only experienced these encounter with one or a couple of friends. I usually only go deep into the wilderness or explore with one or two people, or sometimes just myself going off the fact that I've lived in remote places my entire life. I hope to tell more stories and share my encounters with you, but this is probably one of the most recent and scariest I've ever had. I have a ritual almost, that me and my friends of six years attend to every year. Me and his family go up to the Northern Californian mountains. This year, we went to Mount Shasta. I don't go with my siblings or anyone of my family. They're not really the type of people to go and do that kind of stuff. So, I go with my friends. But this time was like no other. I woke up the day before remembering this trip was the next day and almost had a heart attack. I was nowhere near prepared and had no time to get ready. So, I did what I could. I got most of my stuff ready and headed out to my friend's house. We'll call him KJ. Me and KJ lived next to each other's houses, almost a neighborhood apart, but there were woods that separated us. We had our own paths that we knew like the back of our hands. I had made it over with my stuff and packed into his family's car. I was so excited we finally got to go. I finally got to spend time with KJ and his family. I basically considered them my second family, and I love them all dearly. We arrived at the campground sometime in the middle of the day, it was on the outskirts of a small town in the middle of a forest. 
we unpacked and went to explore this tiny but amazing place. We ended up finding this cool swimming hole that has a stream of melted snow water from the mountains and was freezing. It was perfect for swimming after a long hike, being hot and sweaty, and a great place to relax. It had a rope swing, and I got some cool videos and pictures from it and met some new people. It was fun, and I could say this whole trip was awesome. Even the encounter I had with this thing in the woods couldn't ruin that. Well, we ended up driving almost an hour to Lake Siskiyou and finding an overgrown trail that obviously had not been seen by a lot of people. It was definitely something that interests us. We all were experienced with the forest and nature and did not mind going out to places that were unexplored. That's the whole fun, is it not? We walked down this rocky, sandy path that followed the edge of the stream and was quite peaceful until we saw it. I'm calling it a thing since I have no idea what it possibly could be. At first, we had thought that we were smelling rotten garbage or roadkill or something. It was disgusting and made KJ's mom almost vomit. It didn't really bother me, but it was still an extremely strong and grotesque smell. After smelling this for about 30 seconds or so, we had a weird feeling. I knew exactly what it was. It was almost like a, a primal instinct. No one else knew, but I've had my fair share of wildlife encounters. With bears, bobcats, all kinds of things. At first, I thought we may have run into a bobcat or something. Which would make sense, you know, there are mountain lions and things of the sorts in the area. I hinted that we should probably go back, not directly telling them that we needed to leave as to not freak them out. I think at the time, they just figured it was too much of a weird experience, so they picked up the hints and we headed back. However, we started to hear whoops or whooping noises, and it sent shivers down my spine. I immediately thought of a Sasquatch, hearing the stories and the folk tales. I've always been into the supernatural, and I'm a big fan of the Swamp Dweller show, so I know a thing or two about this topic. It showed me to the bone, and I picked up the pace no longer thinking of KJ or his family. I'm sure they probably wondered why I was walking so fast and looking over my shoulder so much. I figured I was just trying to keep it safe, you know? I was hoping they would just think I was paranoid and not think too much into it. Suddenly, rocks and pine cones were getting thrown at us, all kinds of small things, so we took it as a warning to get the heck out of there. I remember looking back and seeing a figure easily seven foot tall and reddish in color. It somewhat blended in with the manzanita and pine trees. I froze, then asked what it was and his family kept walking, and I kept pointing. He said he couldn't see anything, but he believes that I saw something, and he believes what I saw was probably a Bigfoot. Thank you for letting me share this, and if you want, I can always share more of my stories, as I think I'm a pretty interesting person. I've had a couple encounters with what I believe to be cryptids and maybe even aliens. Anyways, thank you so much for sharing my story. Thanks for listening to these creepy and allegedly true cryptid encounter horror stories. Sent in by viewers just like you. If you have a scary story that you would like to share in a future video, whether it's an encounter with a creepy unknown creature or something completely different, be sure to submit your story at swampdweller.net or the email you can find in the description down below. I'd love to share your story with everyone here in the swamp. It's stories like yours that truly help keep this show going. If you enjoyed these stories, please be sure to hit that like button as it helps me out a ton. The more likes this video gets, the more YouTube promotes it in its algorithm, and that helps me out an absolute ton. If you're new to the swamp, why not join us? Hit that subscribe button, and be sure you turn on notifications to never miss a new video, as I upload them almost every single day, and all things natural and supernatural. If you're not aware, you can download your favorite Swamp Dweller Scary Stories on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, iHeartRadio, and just about everywhere else you find your favorite podcast online. The best part of it all is it's absolutely free. If you'd like to support the swamp outside of hitting that like button, 
and subscribing, maybe check out the merch store. I've got a brand new Christmas design up for you guys that I think you guys are going to love. As always, these holiday designs will no longer be sold after the holidays are up. You can find face masks, mugs, hoodies, t-shirts, and all kinds of stuff in the merch store. Much love and appreciation to my friend Jensen, who helped me read story number two today. If you enjoyed his voice, please be sure to check out his channel. You can find the link to do so in the description down below. He is a very good guy with a great talent, and I think you guys will enjoy his content. He deserves every little bit of love and appreciation that you guys are willing to give him. Thank you guys so much for always supporting the swamp. I'll see you guys soon with another creepy video.